Photoshop has AI now and it's fucking nuts. It does three things now that were literally impossible before. Well, two things that were impossible. The third thing is just way faster than it used to be and it's super fun to play with. Try to ignore what's happening in the background here. Push the button for too long. Number one, expanding any picture. Here's some lovely rocky landscape. I took this on top of a hill when we were in Jordan a couple of years ago. It's great. But let's just say I want this to be super wide, like a 20 by nine format. I can just set the crop tool to 20 by nine, then crop it out well beyond both edges of the picture, select the empty space, hit this generate button, and somehow it's able to match the feeling of this whole thing. The rocks make sense. The sky continues almost seamlessly. This looks like this was the picture I took. Next, here's a photo I made at Daytona International Speedway during this champ car 14 hour race thing. These guys were pushing this car because they overshot their pit stall. I would really never frame a shot with this much extra blank space on the left side of it like this, but this shows how well this thing can detect all the different patterns of the stands, the course, and the road. It even detects the plane of focus. Look how the road is in focus, but then the grandstands are out of focus. And you literally can't tell this is altered. This just looks like a photo. This is too much. I took this shot of my wife and our friend as we were traveling through Petra and whoops, I cut off her feet. And also let's just say I wanted this to be 16 by nine to fit into video better. With the new beta, I can just recrop outside of the edges and where her feet would have been in the shot, select all the blank space, hit generate, Blammo. Somehow it matches the out of focus background, the in focus foreground. It finishes these rocks in like a believable way. And okay, Sarah is a shoe lover and she would not love this, but you get three options and this middle one, well, it's still not nice. If I hadn't pointed it out or looked at it super closely, this looks like a real photo. This looks like a pair of shoes. On to the second thing this generative beta can do. And that's just make things up that aren't there or change aspects of a photo with no artistic ability. Starting with this self portrait of me at the Metropolitan Pavilion in New York City. First, why don't we just expand this room a bit. A, this is not what the rest of this space looks like, but B, look how varied it is. It doesn't just keep patterns going and fill the edges of the frame. It actually creates stuff that it thinks would be in there. It made more columns. It can tell that those columns are in front of shades over this window that it made more of also. It took this fire water line thing and just decided to toss another one in there, but gave it a recess in the wall to make it fit with perspective. It's just so bonkers. And this is the beta. This is the worst this will ever be. But that's not all. Why don't we zoom into this table? And maybe I wish I would have put a potted plant next to me to take this shot. I can just make a marquee square and type out potted plant. Voila, it generates three options for potted plants. Why stop there? A hat like this one is unbecoming of an iconic photo of Nicholas Johnson. Let's give him a new one. That one's dumb. That one's weird. Okay, this one is sufficiently ugly, but when you zoom back, it kind of looks like it was really on my head. And if you pay attention more closely, Photoshop determined that the light was coming from directly above me and produces shadows on the hat and the planter that reflect that. Again, then I took this picture and I messed around a bunch and I changed a bunch of other things. I put a laptop on the table. I had it give me a soldier's uniform. That's silly. That just looks silly. This next one surprised me maybe the most. Just because in order for it to extend this photo in a way that's believable, now it's not just keeping patterns going, but it has to produce original art. God damn it, it sure did just finish that painting. And it's symmetrical and it makes sense and the colors work and it just looks like the rest of that picture. So I kept it going on the other side. It was able to finish up this table and make the other half of this painting of a lady. And it even just tossed in some original art of its own in a similar style. All right, I was having it generate things. So I took this other portrait of myself while I was up in New York. This is something I started doing in places I go. This is at a cabin that's called Stone Leaf. It was built in the 1700s, upstate New York. So after just asking Photoshop to extend this picture all over the place, made more of the couch, made the cushions on the couch look pretty real. On the right side, I typed edge of kitchen so it would extend off and have a kitchen be on the right side of the frame. If you don't scrutinize the table legs, it actually looks pretty believable. Even matches the off-white colorizing treatment I gave this photo. And then I decided to make some changes to reality. Let's generate things that aren't there. Starting with the dog laying on the floor. Just make a selection where I want the dog, type in dog laying down, poof, dog. I felt like there should be some art on this wall above me. So draw a selection and art. It seemed to me that this fridge was a little too modern for an old timey cabin. You can just literally make a messy circle around something like this fridge. I typed in retro fridge and my God, that's a retro fridge that fits into this photo and makes sense. It even changed the dresser next to it in order to nestle it in there, but in a way that you can believe is real. And then to tie the whole room together, I tossed a guitar in leaning up against this table. Yes, you could do this type of thing before, but matching colors really well is hard. Selecting and cutting things out around their edges is hard, especially if they're in the background and sort of out of focus, then it's really hard. Sourcing things that you're allowed to use like that retro fridge is pretty hard if you're gonna do it like in a legal way. But this new beta turns an hour long Photoshop and into like a minute and a half long casual play. And this picture is super high resolution. You could print this thing. I might. Here's my wife at Trolltunga in Norway. Boom, extended. Boom, legs. Those legs are weird. 
Those legs look right. It doesn't have to be photographs either. I'm actually writing a book, a short story fantasy book about the real life of my brother Jeff with the help of ChatGPT. And I'm actually using Midjourney to illustrate the book. In the opening scene, there are two strangers driving a pickup truck to a casino in Minnesota. I had Midjourney make this picture in an anime style. And then I brought it into Photoshop to make it extra wide because it's gonna span two open pages of the book. And look at that, it's able to match the style of the animation perfectly. And it seems like it understands what's going on in the picture. It added more snow falling in the edges. It continues the snow banks going down the sides of the road. This is madness as a fucking beta for this technology. This is absolutely mind blowing in every way. Like people use the term mind blowing for all this AI stuff, but this like is blowing my mind. It's, since it's Minnesota, why don't we just add a deer over here in the corner? So I made a little selection and I typed the word deer and hit generate. It knows to make this an animated deer and it even tosses more snow that's falling in front of the thing. I can't take it. The third thing this generative beta can do that would normally take a lot of skill in Photoshop. We're going over to the Swiss Alps for this one. I took this picture of Sarah standing in front of a vista. I'm just gonna select around her, hit copy, and then we'll go over to this other picture of me standing in the same place. Let's just say I wanted a composite where we're both on a mountaintop. I don't care if it's exactly the same mountaintop, I just want to, you know, a picture of us in the Swiss Alps. First, I want more room to the left, so I perform Miracle A and just extend this photo to the left, make it up, love it. Then I can just paste Sarah into this picture. She doesn't really fit into the scene, like the mountains above her head are at a different perspective because we weren't standing in the exact same place with the camera when we took it. So the perspective of the mountain behind her is all wrong, whatever. So all you have to do first, you have to merge all the layers down and then just select around the portions of the picture that I want to keep. So I'm selecting Sarah and I'm selecting me. And I like that little mound and I like the sky back there. So I'm going to keep all that. Then invert the selection. So Photoshop is looking at everything but what I want to keep press that generate button, and then just have Photoshop make up the rest. And it's gonna find some way to join these two photos believably. I don't know what this little shape is, but luckily you can also just select around something and hit generate again and it'll make it go away. So this is what it comes up with. Look at those mountains. It used some like steep cliffs and some clouds to wrap things around and get them down to the height that they're supposed to be on my side of the photo. And this looks like a believable thing that we were both standing on this mountain. And again, this is the beta.